All right, if you've had a knee or an ankle injury or even surgery and you're trying to return to running, then this is definitely the video for you. Now, the reason we're at the beach today is we're gonna use the beach surface as our running platform to return to running instead of the road. Now, you're probably already wondering why we're using the beach. You've probably already got a few ideas in your head about the beach surface and impact and that sort of thing, but I'm gonna go through the pros and cons about what we do when we run on the beach versus the road and why it's helpful for the knee and also a few pros and cons for that, okay? So let's talk about the road surface first. If you imagine when you're on the road, and listen, if you're not a midfoot runner, okay? So if you're a heel striker, you're probably the sort of person who's going to have problems returning to running on the road. Because when you land on your heel, which a lot of people do, okay, because it's just an extension of walking. Remember, when you're walking, you go heel, toe. A lot of people, when they run, they keep that sort of thing going and they still land on their heel. When you land on your heel, say that's, the, say that's a hard road here. When I land on my heel, when I'm running, bang like that, I then have to then shock load through my knee and my ankle okay so when you land like that it's like a braking mechanism so i'm creating a torque sort of braking force through my knee now if my tendon in my knee so that's my vmo so that's my patella tendon maybe i've had some surgery maybe i don't like the compression through there anything that involves landing down the heel there's a shock load going back for number one but also number two when you're landing on your heel is you brake Okay, now that's that braking mechanism that usually gives people a bit of problems through the knee for a startup. Okay, when you're on the sand, you don't land on your heel. Okay, when you're on the sand and you're running forward, you actually are forced to land midfoot and push through your toe. Some people in really sort of thick, soft sand usually they're sand runners, run on their forefoot and they're used to that. But if you're someone who hasn't run on the sand before, you're probably going to land midfoot because your body just forces that to happen. So it's very hard to land heel toe. You can't really do it because you don't get anywhere. If you land on your heel in the sand, you tend to sort of slip and you can't get any traction. So what people tend to do is they lean forward a bit and land midfoot and push through like that. Okay, so it's a natural movement to actually come forward, land midfoot. Now that's great, okay, you're a midfoot runner already. But the beauty about that is if you land midfoot on the sand, you take away the braking mechanism because you're not slowing yourself down, you're just continually pushing yourself forward. So the fact that you're not going bang on your heel and then having to slow down, which is that braking mechanism like when you're walking, it's like controlled falling, right? But if you're doing that at a higher pace and higher load when you're running, that load through your knee is going to be higher. If you've got a recovering knee injury, it's not 100% strong yet, maybe it's changed a little bit with surgery, then that may run into problems. Now, it's one, if that's you, then I suggest you start on the sand, okay? Now, the good thing about the sand is, like I said, it takes away some of the shock load. So yes, sand is not like the road, it's a lot softer, so shock load is number one. It's probably you're all thinking. But the second thing which I want you to think about is that drop in the braking into the knee, okay? And that's the big thing we talk about in physio, is trying to reduce that braking load into the tendons and the muscle tissue, and you'll get that for when you land midfoot. Now, the only con about this is, when you start landing midfoot, and you're not used to it, what'll happen is, when you push through, because you're not sort of landing like this, then rolling through, you're doing a lot more work rate through the arch of the foot, in the midfoot, and a lot more work rate through the calf, because you have to push off through the sand, okay? so. Beware that when you start this stuff, you might think, great, this is awesome. It's gonna drop off the load of my knee. It's fantastic, but beware that it'll increase the work rate of your calf and your arch of your foot if you're not a midfoot runner. If you're not conditioned to midfoot running, you're like a heel striker all the time, and you're gonna try and change instantly your movement, it's gonna to be tougher. So what I suggest is you take a flat beach, okay? If you can, try not to go down on the sand that's on a slope like that, all right? Because on a bit of an angle, it's a bit tougher for the ankle. So if you've had ankle problems, maybe you had medial knee problems, it's going to be a little bit tougher and you might not like that. So start off with a flat beach if you can. If that means in the super soft stand at the top, that's great. This sand's actually really nice. It's just had some rain on it today. So this sand is sort of 
a little bit wet, it's a little bit damp, it's a little bit harder than soft sand. So there's a bit of grip in it, okay? But it's still soft enough for my impact and I can still land midfoot and push off through the toes, all right? So this is really nice to do. The other thing I'd th think about is making sure you're only saying doing 50 meters at a time and then come back and just go back and forth over your tracks when you're starting out. Of course, mate, when you're longer, down the track, you can go longer down the beach, okay? So you can build up your conditioning, but if you just choose 50 or maybe 100 meters and just go back and forth, then you know you're going on that same stretch and it's a very controlled environment. That's a good way for you to build up your endurance in your calves, in your arches, and of course, the injured body part. Now, let's come to ankles. What about if you've had ankle injuries or ankle surgery? Now, in the clinic lately, even the last year, we've had quite a few ankle surgeries and ankle reconstructions, okay? So people that have had or massive ankle sprains where they've been in a boot and they're really super scared about going back to running. They want to go back to running, but they're super scared about it because the thought of that impact through their ankle just terrifies them. Now, a few things on that. These people who are returning to running have had to do their due diligence on ankle stability. They've got to be on those wobble boards, on those boats, they've got to be doing one leg balance work, they've got to be doing calf raises, all the tendon work, the balance work, throwing balls, all that stuff has to happen before they even think about doing the running because the sand moves, right? So when I land on that, I'm going to slip sideways, I might slip inwards depending on the angle. This is why I talked about not being on an angle too much because you might slip down too much. So you need to have done all your stability work first. So when you land, if you watch me, when you land on this and I slip sideways, then it's not a problem. Because if you look at the sand, it's not gonna be perfectly flat. It's gonna be bumps. Other people have been there before. So I might land here and slip that way. My ankle's gotta be able to handle that. Remember, this is about returning to the running phase getting into, into that impact phase, continual movement phase. If you should be at that point, if you can handle that, then you should be able to that point where you can do the sand running. If you can't handle a sideways movement like that, then you need to go back and rehab and work on all your balance work. So again, think about this one. The ankle, it's really nice for the ankles because you can land midfoot and push off. You don't have to land bang through the ankle, through that calcaneus and hit that shock load. That's sort of gone, if you like, or it's very minimal because you're distributing the weight through the foot, not just landing on the heel and then going through the foot. All right, so that's the good con pro about that. The con about it, like I said, is the, is the balance. But if you're one of those people who've had Achilles problems, shin stint problems, perineal problems, okay, things like that, even midfoot sprains or midfoot fractures, you've got to be super careful because you're going to increase the work rate on the beach if you land midfoot. Okay, and remember on the beach, you have to land midfoot. But when you land, if you look at this, I'm going to, to push through, I have to push through that. Okay, and it's going to slip and move. So there's a lot of power having to be pushed through the foot. Now your Achilles and your tendons through that leg have to be up to speed. So again, you've got to have done your rehab in the physio clinic or at home for those tendons, whether it be calf raises or whatever you're doing with the physio. Those things that needed to have happened before you even think about getting down the beach and starting to load those tendons up, all right? So remember, with those ankle sprains, you might have weakness in your Achilles. You might have those tendon problems. And especially if you're the shin splint type people, you've just got to be very careful that you haven't got a very weak tendon in there that you're going to completely overload by increasing the work rate. But the good thing about people with shin splints is you don't have that sort of landing on the heel, rolling in and pronation problem. Okay, that's gone because you're landing midfoot. All right. So I know that's a lot of information, but you know, simply just running on the sand, there's a lot of things you've got to think about. And the big one is, is you are forced to land midfoot. And there's you know, a lot of pros, a lot of cons. But in my experience, really good way to get that person who is so into running back to running on the road via a little transition phase. And that's called the sand. Hope that helps. See you next time.